Thank you for joining us today. Over the course of this webinar, we'll go in depth into how a teacher unlocked the potential of middle school students by increasing their math fact fluency. We're excited to be talking today with Dina Kagum, a middle school teacher, about her experiences with Explore Learning Reflex, a revolutionary math fact fluency solution. Dinika has taught for over 20 years both math and science. And she'll share how important math fact fluency is for students of all levels and ages. First, we'll show a short video to give you an idea of what reflex is, why it is effective, and what students and teachers think about it. It's like kind of hard, but it's fun as well. It's like together hard and fun. You get to play games and I learn more math problems. I can learn math facts and have fun at the same time. I just started yesterday and I'm addicted to it. The kids love it and they play it over and over and over again. What I like about playing reflex is everything. I'd like them to come to me knowing all their math facts, but they just, they don't. Most kids don't. If they don't have fluency in their facts, they can't move on or they can't free up enough of their little brain cells to do the actual harder algorithms. When a student first logs on, it's going to assess them and it's going to automatically differentiate instruction, which we all try to do to the best of our ability. Reflex math does it automatically and it does it in a way that's engaging and fun. When they go to different games, it knows which facts they need to work on. So if they switch from game to game, it has the exact facts that are right for that student to be working on that day. So you can imagine a teacher trying to do that with 25 students. As much as the intent is there, this is doing it one-on-one -on -one every single day. Their attention span is much longer. The game being tailored specifically to their ability level and allowing them some success early on is hugely important. Yes! They're learning their math facts through reflex, and it's just one less thing I have to teach. The National Math Advisory Panel in 2008 actually came out with some recommendations. And in those recommendations, they really highlighted how a lack of math fact fluency can really harm a student's downstream progress in mathematics. There's two main issues. One is more complex mathematical skills often involve solving a lot of math facts. Um, so if you're shaky with those math facts, uh, skills like estimating, uh, computing with fractions, solving algebraic equations all become much more slow and error prone. Second, research shows the lack of math fact fluency doesn't just make you slower and less accurate with new skills. It really can make it harder to learn the new skills in the first place. As human beings, our working memory is very limited. We can only work with so much information at a time before our brains get overloaded. If we can recall those facts quickly and effortlessly from long-term memory, then we can concentrate all of our working memory on the new skill and our chances of success really go up. Sometimes I don't get the answer right, but I just sometimes I know them. Like, Quick. I like the ability to go in and see each student's growth. I can see class growth. I can see how much time they've spent outside of the classroom using the product. What we're seeing is the kids who use Reflex a lot are really outperforming their peers in standardized testing. We had one group of students, a uh, group of sixth graders, who the year before in fifth grade, 50% of them had passed the state test. So 50% of them had failed. The year they used Reflex extensively, those same kids, 94% of them passed the state test. They actually beat the district average at the end of sixth grade. I'm the last stop in elementary school before they go to middle school, and I do not want to send any child into the sixth grade without knowing their facts. Reflex is a huge asset that allows me to meet that goal for my students. So, Dinika, you detailed your experiences with Reflex in an NCSM article. We're going to share the link to that article at the end of this presentation, and it's also on the results page of our Reflex website. Let's talk a little bit about math fact fluency and middle schoolers, because you taught sixth graders. Not being fluent in sixth grade is a huge problem. The kids just aren't prepared. The majority of our curriculum throughout the middle school is on ratio and proportions. And you're trying to help these kids understand some key concepts, working on divisibility rules, and they don't even know their two table. So it is, it is definitely a huge problem. And whenever you're trying to teach a new concept, they're always struggling. They're, they're still back trying to figure out what seven times eight is. And meanwhile, 
you've introduced a concept and you're having to have those kids come to you after school or before school and to relearn. And it's just really, really hard on these kids because they're not fluent. All these main concepts are just going right by them because they don't know their facts. They don't have fluency. So what did you do in your classroom before you had Reflex? What types of strategies did you put into place to work on math fact fluency? So before Reflex, we were using Mad Minutes, flashcards, playing around the world, doing a variety of different games um, to help the kids with their facts, but it just wasn't doing it. I mean, they still weren't fluent. Um, kids that had really strong family backgrounds and home situations, those kids were doing great. Other kids that didn't have the parent support at home were still not becoming fluent, and they're the kids that are keep that keep falling further behind and going into standard math instead of advanced math. So having reflex has been amazing because it teaches things based on fact families. So for every addition problem, there's a subtraction problem that goes with it. For every multiplication problem, there's a division problem. And with the pictures that they have with it, it just makes so much more sense with kids and the practice and the fluency, the speed at which they become fluent is just amazing. Also, too, a lot of times there you're doing the same things for all kids, and they tend to need specific things. We've been talking about math fact fluency, and we should probably talk a little bit about what that means to us. Um, math fact fluency is automaticity, and you know it's that ability to recall math facts in all four operations accurately, quickly, and effortlessly, freeing the working memory to solve more complex problems. We heard a little bit about that in the video. How did that play out in your classroom once your kids were fluent? So once my kids started, started to become fluent, it was sort of amazing the change. All of a sudden kids who were hating math were starting to love it. Kids in class were all of a sudden raising their hands who originally would never raise their hand, answering questions, feeling free to share answers, which had never happened before. Um, another thing that was pretty amazing is just what the kids were saying um, to their parents and to me and how they were just loving coming to class when, when in the past they had hated walking into the room or in any classroom. And within the classroom, what I thought is sort of neat is watching them being able to do a lot of mental math in their head, working with larger numbers, where in the past they could barely do a simple problem. Now they're multiplying mentally in their head three by two digit numbers, you know, like 500 times 12, and they're able to mentally work out and talk this through with me and to actually get a solution. And that's pretty amazing for kids who are anywhere from special ed or just standard math level. Sounds like they trusted themselves a little more as mathematicians. I say a lot. That's huge. And you know, a lot of times we think that, that math fluency or the need for it ends at the end of elementary school or even the beginning stages of middle school, but there's so many examples we can point to. Uh, even just a simple pre-algebra equation, as math teachers, we're interested in students thinking about the distributive property or the division property of equality, and they're not going to get to those big thoughts if they're bogged down by the 10 math facts that are embedded in just a single equation. I thought it was surprising that um, fact retrieval even predicts performance on standardized tests. You know, I totally agree with that. Having that retrieval is just so important for their growth in math in middle school. They need to be able to recall those facts. It's going to help them with the algebra, the all the properties. I mean, it is just so important. What's a, also that's interesting is that kids that know their facts, they're not as reliant on that calculator. They're almost at the point where they want to do it themselves and then double check the calculator. And again, they're trusting themselves finally in mathematics. So, Danica, once you decided that uh, you wanted to use reflex in your classroom, how did you make it work? You have a sixth grade curriculum to cover. How did you 
fit Reflex in and make it as successful as you did? So to start it off, I first began using Reflex myself because I truly needed to know how the program worked, what things looked like, what the kids were going to experience. Once I did this and put myself through the process, and I became fluent, at, and teachers, it's not going to take you too long, um, I was able to develop a plan to use in the classroom. First thing I did, I rallied my parents, sent emails home to my parents asking for goodies for a grab bag. This include basic school supplies, pencils, pens, erasers, and then fun prizes like whoopee cushions and some other things that the, the kids sort of got a kick out of, but they had to promise not to use them in any other class but mine. Um, so we had the grab bag, and I used the milestones with the grab bag. Every time a kid got a milestone of 2,000 or a multiple of 2,000, they were able to pull from the grab bag, and we did this like a big, we sort of had a little mini reflex party every Monday where the kids could grab, um, I'd pass out their milestones and kids could grab from the bag. Um, another thing I did is we had a high scoreboard in which the kids within each class were trying to beat each other. Another thing I did is once kids became fluent in either add, subtract, or multiply, divide. Once eight kids became fluent, we actually had a pizza party, and the administrator administration actually paid for the pizza, and we had a, a little math party, and the kids, once the kids saw that happening, all the kids wanted to get involved in earning that pizza. So the more you can make it fun for the kids, the better. In class time, I probably took about 30 minutes a week preparing um, everything for reflex. So that's about all the time it took me as a teacher. Another thing I did is because we didn't have computers and very little computer time, we had kids could go to the computer lab once a week. So because of that, I made doing reflex a homework assignment. Kids had to get their green light three times a week. The day at the lab also counted as one of those days. And so that became part of their weekly homework and participation grade. You had such success in your classroom. We're hearing about the students' attitudes, how they did better with learning the material as you taught it. But you also had great success with standardized testing. And we want to share some of your results. So we have information on your fluency gains. We have information on your NWEA MAP test scores and on the high-stakes end-of-course state math test. Let's take a look at the fluency growth first. Your kids went through two separate assignments, add, subtract, 0 to 10, and then multiply, divide, 0 to 12. If we look at the second assignment, the multiplication assignment, they started off at 26% fluency as sixth graders and ended up as 98 percent. This took about an average of 50 days for the students to get to this rate. So I do want to point out that I did start with multiply divide at the beginning of the year because there's so much multiplication and division and, and ratios within the curriculum that I decided to skip the adding and subtracting and I was amazed too with their starting fluency so the average is 26%, but I had kids, quite a few, especially the standard kids, who were below 5% fluent in multiply divide. And to me, that is just amazing coming from elementary school being that low. You know, they're supposed to, based on NCTM, be totally fluent by the end of fourth grade. Well, in middle school, guys, they aren't. 20%. 26% is just, I think it's hard for, for entering sixth grade and being that low. But luckily, in just a little bit of time, we were able to get them caught up. Now, if we take a look at your MAP test scores, you administered the MAP test in the fall and then in the winter. Typical growth for a sixth grader during this time frame is three points. Your kids gained 7.9 points, more than double the national average. 
Now, if we take a look at this, a typical sixth grader will gain three points first semester, three points second semester. Things will remain constant over the summer, and then they, when they return as seventh graders, they add a couple more points on. Your students got that far just in the first semester. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was pretty amazed when you guys showed me this data, but what amazed me more was what you're not seeing, and that's how, how the kids grew in number number sense. The average growth in number number sense was 14 points, which is huge, and that was in the same amount of time. And I had some kids, a, little spe a girl that was in special ed, she grew over 25 points just within number number sense. Here's a kid who has never passed the SOL test, scoring, you know, pass fail, and and now in the map test, she's actually finally showing some growth and starting to feel really good about herself. And this happened with so many students. I, you know, I just can't tell you how important it is to use this reflex to really get their number number sense down pat to make them strong and confident. Well, and if we take a look at your um, SOL scores, we see a similar pattern. Um, your, your students, when they were fifth graders, had a much lower pass rate than the district as a whole. In fact, only 50% of them passed the fifth grade test compared to 69% for the district. But by the end of sixth grade, after their experience with reflex, they not only closed this gap, but they exceeded the division's average pass rate. They were at 94% compared to the division, which was at 84%. And to put it even larger perspective, the state average gain was just 10 points from 67% to 77%. So they had everyone beat with their SOL scores. Talk about that a little bit. They had to be excited. So what was great about the SOL results is I finally had kids who had passed an SOL test that since they started taking SOL, te SOL tests in math, they had never passed. And these kids were psyched. And if, you know, I'm that mean teacher that made them show all their work while they're taking the test, and none of the kids balked about it about it. They all just put their head down, showed all their work, they were confident, they used all their test taking strategies, everything they used from got from reflex they were able to put into play and in turn you know you see the results these kids were finally passing and I just wish more teachers would do this to be able to let their kids finally succeed. Well, it's very exciting to hear about how your students changed with the use of reflex and all the information that we've discussed and a little bit more can be found in the NCSM article we referenced at the beginning of this webinar. There's a lot of other great data and other great test results as well and all of that can be found at reflexmath.com results.